Hey, good day, it's Prezo. Welcome back to the workshop. Now, a while ago, I made a series of videos on making a set of Art Deco inspired wall lights or wall sconces. If you didn't see those videos, there's a link to the playlist up above there now, and you can go back and check out the whole build. But in order to make those light fittings, I needed to be able to make four decorative brass castings. And when I made the video on making the castings, I mentioned that I had a, a lot of problems with my hands. So I've got very shaky hands. And when you go to lift the pattern out of the molding flask, if you don't lift it steadily, it will sort of knock from side to side and it can damage the cavity that you're going to pour the liquid metal into. Now I know what the problem is. I went to see my GP recently and he sat me down after examining me and he said, you know what, Mark? He said, you don't have enough blood in your alcohol stream. Now I know that problem's not gonna go away and it's not gonna get any better as I get older. So I figured that there had to be a way of getting some sort of mechanical assistance to be able to get the patterns out of the mold. And that's what I wanna show you in today's video. Now before I do that though, I was sent some photographs just recently by a gentleman named Jason Hutchinson. Now Jason is living in the UK. He's restoring a beautiful old canal boat. Now I'll put his uh, Instagram link uh, below there now. If you have any interest at all in marine technology or just restoration in general, check out his Instagram page because the work he does is outstanding. But the thing is, he went on holiday recently to a place called Christchurch in Dorset in the UK. And he went to a, like a bar or restaurant, uh, it's called the Arcadia Lounges. But he sent me some photographs of these beautiful Art Deco wall sconces that he saw in the bar. And uh, these are massive, uh, they're much bigger than the ones I made. And it looks like they take four light bulbs each but they're certainly very striking and I must thank Jason for sending me those photos. So um, yeah, check out Jason's uh, Instagram page. Like I say, it's, it's really worth a look. Anyway, let's have a close up look at what we're gonna do here today and uh, we'll uh, show you some methods for overcoming your problem if you're like me and you don't have steady hands like a surgeon. <laughs> this box here is one half of a molding flask. Uh, this particular part is called the drag and this is normally where we start when we're making a casting. And what we would do is we'd place the patterns in the bottom of the drag. We would pack sand on top of the patterns and ram it down. When you turn the box over, the patterns will be exposed on the other side and you can carefully lift them out of the packed sand, leaving a cavity behind, which is the identical shape of the pattern. That's what you would pour the liquid metal into. Now I've got two different patterns here. This one here has symmetry around two different planes. And on the other side, I've drilled a hole and that hole is exactly in the center of gravity of that particular pattern. And that means you can just simply drive a screw or a rod in there and lift it by that point. And in theory, it should come out vertically and it shouldn't damage the cavity as it comes out. This one here is a bit different. You can see that this one is only symmetrical around one plane and there's really no easy way of finding the exact center of gravity. Now I've drilled a hole there, but that's not the center of gravity. It would be more over toward this side here. And when I go to lift this, I've got to be careful that I support the weight of it. And once again, that we try and lift this truly vertically. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'll make a mold. I'll make one half anyway, and then we'll come back and we'll look at the two different methods that I've come up with to do this. In fact, one of the methods is not my idea. It was sent to me by one of my viewers, but uh, it's a really good idea and I practice it and it does work. So we'll have a look. This sand that I'm using here is just some green sand. It's probably a bit wet for this, but we're not actually going to do a casting, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, let me clean up a bit and I'll show you these two methods. Before we do try and extract these patterns from the mold, it's a good idea to do a process called wrapping. Now, it's not singing to a beat. <laughs> it's actually 
using a tool like this. Now this is a bit of 10 millimeter diameter steel rod with a wood screw silver soldered onto the end of it. And what I do is I just simply drive that into a hole pre-drilled in the pattern and then we can tap the steel rod and the screw from side to side. Now to do that I'm using this tool here. This is a wrapping tool that was sent to me by a gentleman named Tom Kitchen. You'll find him on YouTube. He goes under the name of Sandrammer and he very kindly made this tool and sent it to me. And what you do is you just simply tap the steel rod from side to side, go all the way around. And if you watch really carefully, you'll see a gap open up around the edge of the pattern and you might see a few little sand grains vibrating loose as you do that process. So that ensures that the pattern has made the cavity slightly wider all the way around so that as you withdraw the pattern, even though it has draft angle or a taper to it, it's less likely to dislodge the edges of the cavity as you take it out. So I've done that one. Let's do this one here. And this, uh, this tool has two different openings depending on you know, the, how delicate the pattern is and how much you need to tap it. Wait till I zoom in and you'll be able to see how much that pattern is moving. So I think you can see there that the pattern is quite loose in the mold now. That just makes it easier to get out. I've just pulled the camera back so you get a better view of what I'm about to do. Now prior to this what I would normally do is just drive this uh, steel rod into the pattern by the screw point and then I'd grab hold of the steel rod about here and try and lift that vertically. But like I said if you move your hands if they shake at all you've got every chance of brushing the edges of the cavity with the pattern as you try and take it out. So rather than try and lift it with something rigid, what Tom Kitchen suggested was that you use something like a piece of string. So I've got a, an ordinary hook here. I'm going to drive that into the pattern. And then I've got a piece of string with a loop already formed in it. And we can place that over the hook. And then as we put tension on the string and lift that, you can imagine what's going to happen. Now, what Tom suggested was that you use your wrapping tool <laughs> to do this. But of course, you don't need to. You could use a pencil or a piece of steel rod or anything you like. But uh, I'm going to lift this now. I might just pull the camera back a bit more so you get a better view. I've just shortened that string quite a lot so I can hold this at a more comfortable height. But hopefully what you can see is that if I move my hands around a lot, that movement isn't translated down to where the string is attached to the hook or at least it's reduced a great deal. So what I'll do now is it's going to put some tension on the string and this should just pop out of the mold. And that's it. It's that easy. And the edges are nice and clean. There's no sand fallen into the cavity at all. So super happy with that. It's just way easier than what I was doing previously. Anyway, let's have a look at this one now. Second method for doing this involves making a device, but it doesn't have to be as complicated as what I'm showing you here. Essentially what you need is a column which can be held rigidly against the surface of the bench. And there's an arm here which can pivot around the column, but it can also move in and out slightly along this long axis. And at this end here there's a piece of square steel bar with a screw point attached to the end of it and this can be lifted and that's what's going to lift the pattern out of the sand mold. Now on my welding bench I've got a socket which is screwed to the top of the bench and it takes this diameter steel bar and can be clamped accurately in that socket. If you don't have that you could just use a G-clamp or you could use wood screws to screw it down to the bench if you've got a wooden bench top. Like I say you'll have to work out how it's going to work for you in your workshop. But let me get this set up and then we'll have a close look at how it works. So what I can do here is just simply drop that into the socket and clamp it up tight and that holds that nice and rigid and then this horizontal arm here which is just made of steel everything here has been powder coated just because I can do it. You don't have to do that. 
But as you can see that that arm can be pivoted, but it can also move along a limited distance with a slot arrangement here. And I've just got one of these little ratchet levers so I can lock that in place. So you need to have it so it's adjustable, but you also need to be able to lock it so everything is tight and there's less chance of anything moving at this end here. Now as you can see that bit of square steel bar is free to move up and down. And I've got a clamping knob here so I can also rotate that square steel bar as well. And that allows me to drive the screw into the pattern and then lock it, but it's still free to move vertically. So this little collar here is just made of aluminium and the part that the square steel bar slides in is just a piece of 3D printed plastic. Now 3D printing it means that, well, it's easier to make a square hole and you can size the hole so that you get fairly accurate movement without any side to side movement. I also just poured some silicon dry lube down inside that fitting there so that it does slide freely. If it, if it binds or catches in any way, that can make it difficult to lift the pattern smoothly. So in practice, what we'll do is we're going to slide the pattern underneath. Now, if you don't quite get it right, you've got the adjustment in this arm here. So I could just simply slide and pivot everything until it all sort of goes in where you want it to go. And then I can lower the screw point into the hole in the pattern. So I'll just bring you in a bit closer while we do this. So hopefully you can see there. So what we do now is we just loosen the screw at the top here and rotate that square seal bar and you'll feel it getting tight when the screw is driven into the pattern. Then lock that screw. So now the only movement I can get is vertical and it won't rotate left or right. And then all you do is just simply pull that up. And it's that easy. And it just comes out perfectly. So, oh, got, okay, so I can take that off there. The only thing you have to be careful of now is you don't drop that steel bar and let it fall into the mold because that would ruin it. So we can just slide that out of the way and we're done. Hopefully you can see how clean the edge of that cavity is and that's come out of there and hasn't dislodged one grain of sand. And if I'd been doing this the old way, lifting things by hand, I'd nearly always ruin at least one of the molds and have to redo it. So making that device has saved me a lot of time and effort and heartache and stress and that's not what you need when you're metal casting. So I'm going to give you a closer look at a few parts of this and uh, you can decide whether you can make one. It doesn't have to be as complicated as what I've done. I just like making things out of steel. I like powder coating them because they look good and you don't get the problem with corrosion and rust. So let's have a close look and then we'll wrap up. So here's just a quick look at the bottom end of this uh, column here. So this is just a piece of solid steel bar stock, big flat washer attached to the top of it. And there's a spigot which is uh, welded inside this steel tubing here. So I just um, used plug welds on the outside of the steel tubing there to make sure it didn't fall out. At the top end here, I've got a steel plug that fits in the top of the tubing. That's been welded in. And then I've just got one of these cheap little uh, levers with a, an M6 thread on it and a big flat washer there to hold the arm and stop it from pivoting or rotating. Now the arm has a slot at one end and you, that slot doesn't need to be very long. It's just to give you a little bit of adjustment so you can line everything up and make sure you're going to get the screw end into the pattern. It's got a piece of uh, steel bar stock welded on to give it a T-section just to make sure it's nice and rigid and it won't flex at all. And at this end here I've got a big round uh, eye welded onto that piece of steel bar stock and uh, this aluminium section in here is free to rotate if you loosen the screw and that rotates the whole square steel bar. Now stupidly I put a roll pin in there and that fits into a slot in that aluminium piece so that it can rotate but not fall out. I really should have used a threaded uh, grub screw there so that I could take it apart to lubricate it or clean it. Uh, now that I fitted that roll pin, I'll probably never get that out with the, without destroying something. And there's the 3D printed part. And uh, when I made that, I made two of them. The first one was too short. And what I found was that this steel rod was binding uh, when you tried to lift it. So I just lengthened it by about 25 millimeters and that fixed the problem. So that's it. It's very, very simple. Oh, and at this end here, the screw is just driven into a hole in the end of the square bar. 
I didn't use any uh, like glue or anything like that. If you were doing it again, or if I were doing it again, I probably would silver solder that. Could still do it, but it will ruin the powder coat. As it is, that's a that's a really tight hammer fit, so I don't think it's going to come out. Well, that's it, guys. Short one today. Thank you for watching. Now, before I do go, though, I should mention that I was sure somebody else would have come up with a solution to the problem that I have. And I checked on YouTube, I checked on forums, I checked on Instagram, and I couldn't find anything like this. So, I don't know, maybe I'm a trailblazer. Unfortunately, I didn't do any drawings of it, but then again, this device that I've made may not suit your setup. Uh, it will depend on what sort of molding boxes you're using, how tall they are, what sort of mounting system you might need on your bench. But as you can see, it's fairly easy to replicate and fairly easy to replicate in different materials too. So it's uh, free to be used uh, in whatever way you want. And I hope that you get some benefit from using it too. Now, I also should mention that this device would be handy for lowering a core into a mold cavity. So when you're putting a core into a mold, you've got the opposite problem. You've got to be able to lower this down into a fixed position accurately and not get it misaligned. So what you'd be able to do is attach the core to the screw point and then lower it into its position and then you could do very fine adjustments to get it aligned and then just simply seat it in the cavity. So that's another use for it. Anyway, I've rambled on too long. Uh, thank you for watching today. Uh, check back later. There's always going to be new and interesting content here. And it's always good to see a smiling face around the workshop. So I'm going to say goodbye. It's Prezzo. See ya.